If you're watching this, you already know that the banking crisis is just the beginning of what's about to unfold. We are now on the brink of a government debt crisis that can wipe out creditors and freeze the entire credit system. Do you think this is orchestrated or an accident? I'm here to show you behind the curtain because now is the time to hedge your bets. Global governments and insiders are getting into position. Do you know what they're doing? This is imperative to understand. Who knows more about money than central bankers do? You can prepare in the same way that they are. Coming up. I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver dealer specializing in custom strategies. Do you have your strategy in place? And also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button because this is the time that you need to know what's going on as critical changes are taking place. So what is so critical that's taking place? Well, let's see. First of all, what supports a fiat money? Okay, what supports this garbage, right? Full faith and credit of the government. Translated, as long as you trust them, you have faith, then you will continue to loan them money. So, and extend them credit. So it is that confidence piece that really supports the money and rapid inflation makes people question their confidence in the system, but it is critical. So what's been happening now, this is the most current sovereign debt in default by the bank of Canada. They put this report out every year, but this observation only goes to 2021. So that was before globally central banks had begun, begun to rise, increase the rates at a rapid rate. Now, let me point something out to you. This red area are advanced economies. Going all the way back to the 70s, you did not see any advanced economies default on their government debt. You saw a lot of defaults, actually over 4,800, but you did not see advanced economies until the sovereign debt crisis in Europe in 2013 and 2014. Since then, looks like it's pretty consistent, doesn't it? And again, that last observation was 2021. And then the central banks began to raise their rates. So that means a few things. Number one, all of the debt that's been issued when we were in zero interest rate policy for the last 15 years, that is all underwater. Remember, rising interest rates means lower market value of the principal, right? Current market. If you hold it to maturity, the assumption is, is they're not going to default like you're seeing here and you'll at least get your money back, though it'll have a whole lot less purchasing power. For somebody, that's a good deal. I'm not sure it's so good for the creditors. But there is also a tectonic and um, a generational shift in interest rates because what Jim Grant is showing you in here is that we've had this long-term bull market. Again, interest rates go down, pushing the value, market value of the bonds up, right? Well, that is now shifting because the whole system is broken. It, it died in 2008, but rising rates are deflationary because fewer people borrow and spend. So all of the inflation that the central banks did using their money guns to just create an unlimited amount of free money. Well, that party is over and raising the rates has frankly popped that bubble, but it also makes it harder to repay. And again, it doesn't matter whether you are a government, a corporation, or an individual. It's just that the individuals have the least amount of access to creating all sorts of new money. Gover central banks and governments certainly have the easiest way to do it. 
But the reality is, is it normally takes roughly 12 to 18 months going through the system from central bank policy till we see the impact on the, on the economy. So we have not yet felt the full impact of the global central banks rising rates. And frankly, it doesn't matter. Again, big, small, in between, everybody is impacted by that. No doubt about it. And we can see it here on yields on sovereign bonds. That means that it costs the governments a lot more money. So yields on summer bonds rose significantly due to tighter mon monetary policy, raising rates. That's what that tighter monetary policy and also making an attempt to run off their balance sheets. But either way, yields are up. Canada, Germany, uh, the United States and the United Kingdom. And that costs governments more to service debt. Well, where do governments get their money from? Hmm. Taxpayers or even more debt. And I did a study back in, I think it was like 2009, something like that. Because at that point we were running about a trillion dollars in deficit. And yet we were servicing something like 13 trillion. Now it's over 30, but back then 13 trillion in debt. And I said to myself, well, if we've only, if we're only running a trillion dollar deficit, why are we servicing 13 trillion in debt? And when I dug into the numbers, cause you can go to the FRED, F-R-E-D, the Federal Reserve Education Department, you can get all the spreadsheets behind there. And what I found is that what was happening is we were not paying all of the debt or even all of the interest on the debt so that excess interest was going into the principal and compounding. Well, the higher the interest rates go, the more that's going to happen. And even the CBO, uh, the budget office, expects debt service to go up and up and up. That means there'll be less money for other programs. But only way to fight inflation is with deflation. It makes it really simple. The only way to fight deflation is with inflation. So they've been walking that tight right rope using their balance sheet and using interest rates, but the party is over now because they're being forced to raise the rates. And that pops the debt bubble for everyone, everyone all over the world. And particularly in the US because the treasury is the base of the global financial system. So now they're in a frantic push to solve this sovereign debt crisis and that push irks Wall Street. Why? Well, let me tell you why. Wall Street took all the debt from all these different sovereign countries and turned them into product and they trade them. Foreign exchange is huge. And they also package them up and sell them. So in institutional investors, which are investors that invest other people's money, like when you make a deposit into your 401k or pension money or mutual funds, ETFs, etc. These are all institutional investors. And so those are, that's who Wall Street turns them into a product and gets you to take all the risk and gets you to pay for it. I mean, it's genius. It really is. This runs no risk, right? Physical gold, physical silver in your possession, no counterparty risk, zero. This other stuff, all counterparty risk. Any contract is only as good as the counterparty to that. And we've already seen an increase and uh, that sovereigns are really in a precarious position. But the proposals going through uh, the Congress would limit how much investors are allowed to recoup when countries restructure their debts, a concept that's riling up Wall Street. Because in the past, you've had hedge funds that when a country has made an agreement with creditors and they're holding some of their debt, they're saying no. And they just are very patient with it, go through courts with it, and ultimately have one to be paid out at 100%. So this would limit that. What does that do to the value of all those products? 
it gives them less value. Current market value as well as future market value. So does Wall Street like that? Heck no, they don't like that. And keep in mind that the stress always shows up at the bottom first. So these emerging markets, these over indebted, less affluent countries, but let me tell you, coming to a theater near you, nobody, nobody, nobody is immune from this. So you'll have to protect yourself. Hence the mantra, food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, community and shelter. Get it done. That's the whole point of the strategy is to put you in a position to weather this storm and actually end up better off on the other side of it. Because this storm is already raging. Maybe you can't see it because it's in the form of an iceberg. And the banking crisis that is not over yet, but is invisible at the moment, that was just a little teeny weeny tip. It's all of those derivatives that are underneath. And here are some countries that could trigger this. So we already know that many of these are in a high inflation or hyperinflationary state. Hence the momentum behind a pair of bills winding their way through committees in New York, a state with laws that govern roughly half of foreign bonds issued by emerging market sovereigns. And by the way, after New York, London laws are the most relevant for global emerging government debt. Now, can they change the laws? Yes, that's what they're working on. And to limit how much Wall Street can recoup when a government goes into default. They're not just doing this for the emerging markets. I got news for you. They're doing it for everybody because they want to stay in control on the other side of this mess that they created. Make no mistake about it. And the reason why I'm also saying that the U.S. is not immune is because, again, the Treasury bond is the foundation of the global market economy, the foundation, right? Well, we know we've been butting heads with China. We know that there's virtually no purchasing power left in any government-based money in the world, right? We know that these are truths. So let's divert attention over here. But China's U.S. Treasury holdings hit a 12-year low because of the rate hikes, because of the tension. Why? And yet at the same time, their gold imports are up 60% because they are diversifying away from U.S. dollar holdings. It has been such a huge boon to us that live here in the U.S. that the dollar has been the world reserve currency. Because in theory, this is not in reality anymore, but in theory, we were the only country in the world that could actually print from debt the money that we needed to repay our global bills. Everybody else had to buy dollars in order to do that. Well, those days are coming to an end and no country retains that position forever. So you can see China's holdings of U.S. treasuries. Look at this the lowest in over a de decade, but the gold raises their reserves as the U.S. debt declines. And it's not just in China that we're seeing this happen because we've also witnessed the U.S. weaponize their global money system, SWIFT, against those that we don't like, that aren't doing what we want. Isn't that interesting? And because the buyers, including the Federal Reserve, by the way, the buyers of U.S. Treasuries are declining, well, we're having a lot more volatility in the Treasury market. This is not good. This is like, this is like an earthquake, right? It's, if this is the foundation of the global financial system, it's shifting like this now. And that we've been talking about the lack of liquidity in the bonds. Well, that's where it was in 2008. And those are the only dates that are higher than it is right now. But hey, we're just headed to a soft landing. Hey, we got control of this. That's garbage. They don't. 
It's just a big experiment. And keeping in mind, and I mean, I'm putting my neck out here, and I have been, but keep in mind that we're not that far from June 30th. And whether or not we will see a rumble from that LIBOR to SOFR transition, whether we see it today or we see it a little bit down the road, it's got to come because the ground underneath all of these global financial institutions are shifting and not in a good way, not in a good way. So how prepared are you? How prepared are you? And how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Step back and say, where am I the most vulnerable? And do something to not feel as vulnerable in that area. And then step back and say, okay, where do I feel the most vulnerable? The beauty of good money, gold and silver, is that it's globally accepted and has the broadest base of buyer. So if you get your money right to begin with, then you have a much better chance of buying, oh, I don't have the food basket in here anymore, but of buying the other things that you need. If you don't have that in place, then you better have everything else in place. So the volatility is at elevated levels in the most important market on the planet. And the new treasury issuance, because we have now just eliminated the debt ceiling or suspended it for a while, right? So we'll see how much treasury, new treasury debt they're going to issue, but they're issuing this and that sucks up even more market liquidity because who's gonna be buying it if the other foreign governments and the, and the uh, Federal Reserve is not buying? Hmm, let's see. Well, history would tell us institutional investors. So when you're making your deposits into those 401ks and into those pension plans and your IRAs and all of that, and you're allowing other people to manage your money, do they really have your best interest at heart? Do they even understand this? I'm telling you, if it were me, and I've told you guys this before, and I was working with a financial consultant, a stockbroker, an insurance agent, anybody that is investing my wealth, you just ask them this question. Tell me, what supports a currency? And how can the government create new money? And what's the answer? Full faith and credit. As long as you trust them, you'll keep loaning them money. This doesn't require interest rates. This doesn't require confidence because it's real and it's used across every single sector of the global economy and it's been considered money for thousands and thousands of years. And maybe that is why China's gold binge extends into its seventh month as holdings climb. Because whoever holds the gold holds your power, holds your choices, right as they're trying to take all of our freedoms away, take us into central bank digital currencies so that they have full surveillance on everything that we do. This is critical. China knows it. So do global central banks who have bought more gold than they ever have since we were transitioning into a new system. And what do we know? Seven in 10 central banks surveyed believe that gold reserves will increase in the next 12 months. This is a 10 point increase from last year. Seven in 10. Who's not? Well, let's hope there never is an audit of the US reserves. That's what I can tell you because central banks are buying gold to have global purchasing power and global choices and global power. You need to do it for the same reason and many others. So if you haven't, you have to remember to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell. We'll let you know when we're going on and stay tuned this week for updates on gold, banks, retirement, and so much more. It's critical because ignorance doesn't make you immune. It leaves you vulnerable. And this is truthfully not a good time to be vulnerable. 
So make sure if you haven't, visit us on Beyond Gold and Silver where we talk about the mantra and the things that you can do on all different levels to help you survive this and thrive through it. Leave us a comment, give us a thumbs up, click that Calendly link below, have a conversation with one of our gold and silver strategy specialists, put your own strategy in place and get it executed ASAP. Because the reality is financial shields are made of metal, not paper or promises. And until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.